And suddenly, the next two weeks don't look as bad as it did even 24 hours ago. You got Carolina at home, and then you travel to London to take on Jacksonville. Can the Eagles get to 5-3 and three before the bye? Be pretty big. Be pretty big. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, so let's get into a couple things in this video. I am looking ahead. I'm looking to see what, where the Eagles can be heading into the bye. I've been doing this all season long. But according to some people, I'm, I'm not allowed to look ahead. I mean, I'm allowed to do whatever the fuck I want. First Amendment says I can say whatever the fuck I want. But some people, you know, they, they want to be players and they want to be coaches too. They, they don't want to look ahead one game at a time. That's what people were telling me last night on Twitter. Like, my God, everyone's got to be the smartest person in the world on Twitter. Everyone goes for the mic drops and, and the knockout blow. That's what people do. But I am looking ahead because I am not a player. I am not a coach. I'm trying to figure out where the Eagles are going to be in terms of a seed heading into the playoffs. Because if they're a three seed, they're not repeating. If there are two, maybe. But we got to see how things play itself out. All right. So before I kind of like get into anything, let me just say this. There's been, been a myth kind of going around that the Eagles have kind of fixed their pass run ratio. They didn't fix shit. I know they threw it 36 times and they ran it 31, but it really wasn't like that. Here's what the ratio was through three quarters of play. They threw it 35 times, and it was 20 design runs. Those 20 design runs went for 84 yards, 4.1 yards per carry. That's actually pretty good. But if you look at the end of the game total, the yards per carry was a lot less. And the reason for that, in the fourth quarter, the Eagles were just running out the clock. And because the play calling was so predictable, they were getting tackled like one or two yards uh, before – you know, on their gains, basically. So they weren't gaining the yardage in the fourth quarter. But, you know, if you kind of take things and look at it from a different point of view, 20 carries for 84 yards through three quarters of play, 4.1 yards per carry, it's really not that bad at the end of the day. So I do think, yeah, Doug Peterson still has to run the ball a little bit more to set up the offensive line to help them out. I, I don't think that Doug has made all the adjustments yet. I still kind of saw the same stuff on Thursday. I didn't see more even pass run ratio. I've been seeing the same stuff I've been seeing all season long. But it worked because the offensive line was actually able to keep Carson Wentz a little bit more upright. I mean, if, if the offensive line is able to keep Carson Wentz upright consistently, then no, they don't even have to run the goddamn ball if they don't want to. But that's the problem. The line's not keeping them upright. And we're seeing a lot of sacks, a lot of pressures, and him getting hit a lot. All right, the other thing I want to get into. So Doug Peterson not really making adjustments, but somebody who is, is Jim Schwartz. So if you checked out the Twitter timeline today, you'd see that one of the things that Jim Schwartz is doing the last two weeks, corners are creeping up. They're playing a little closer to the line of scrimmage. It's still not, you know, every snap. They're not playing press man every snap. They're not doing that but they're still mixing in the off coverage. But we're seeing a lot more press, a lot more uh, tightness within the line of scrimmage between the cornerback and the receivers. And Darby just shut down Odell Beckham on Thursday night. Uh, Avante Maddox, you know, once Sidney Jones got hurt, Avante Maddox moved into the slot. They put Rasul Douglas as the safety. Um, you know, kind of a limited sample size, but, but Douglas did look all right in, in you know, the, the limited time that he had. Uh, I, Maddox got beat a couple times off the line. Um, that's, that was his big problem in college was the release. I mean, you can beat him off the release. You can get the inside positioning right off the release. And Odell Beckham did it a couple times. That's something we're going to get into in the, the film study with Brennan and I, whenever that might be, uh, either tomorrow or Wednesday. So basically, I just wanted to talk about uh, those two things, you know, kind of to start. Doug Peterson still not really making the adjustments. I, I, I'd like to see Corey Clement get the ball more. Uh, he just, when he turns that corner, it, it, there's just so much more explosion between he and Smallwood. Smallwood's the in-between the tackles guy. He's going to keep his legs churning. That's what he does. Clement, 
get him on the outside zones, get him on the sweeps, and that's what he's going to do. So there's that. I want Corey Clement getting more carries than Wendell Smallwood. Oh, that Dallas game yesterday. I'll tell you what, that's, that's the best thing that could have happened for Dallas, for an Eagles fan. You know why? Because Jerry Jones right now probably thinks that Jason Garrett is a good head coach. He probably thinks that Dak Prescott is a $100 million quarterback. Let them think that and let them pay him and let Jason Garrett stay in Big D for as long as possible. But if you really watch the game, I think you really knew what actually happened. I mean, Dak Prescott had wide receivers running free the, the entire game. Still didn't get to 200 yards. He added a bunch of yards on the ground because they were running the ball a lot with him. But in terms of the passing game, I mean, I, I, I don't know what's going on with that Jacksonville defense right now, but busted coverage after busted coverage two weeks in a row, it looked atrocious. It looked atrocious. They're going to get it cleaned up by the time they play Philly. I'm sure their defense is going to look a little bit better. But that offense, I mean, how are they going to move the ball? They're going to get Leonard Fournette back maybe. But that, that's something that the Eagles defend well. They stop the run. And this isn't like Tennessee where, you know, Tennessee at least had something in Corey Davis. Or what the hell does Jacksonville have? Dante Moncrief? DJ Chark, Kalen Cole's okay, but eh. I'm not really worried about Jacksonville as much as I was a month ago, as much as I was prior to the season. That's a game the Eagles can win. And the Panthers, you know, the Panthers, I, I was feeling confident, you know, even before yesterday. I really haven't been that impressed by them, even though they were 3-1 and one coming into yesterday. Uh, that's a team, if, if Carolina's on the road, you can beat them. And uh, I think the Eagles should take care of business Sunday. But that Jacksonville game now, after seeing them the last two weeks, I think that's a winnable game now. And the Eagles, maybe, just maybe, they get to 5-3 and three heading into the bye. And that's going to set up the second half of the year. You're going to have to win some games to get the home field. You're going to have to beat New Orleans on the road. You're going to have to beat the Rams on the road. But if you get to 5-3, and three, all of a sudden, you're kind of putting yourself in a position to do something. And that's all you can ask for. Put yourself in that position and then go get it in the second half of the year. Adrian Fedku, out.